my goal here is to give you nine, if you will, nine items that uh, nine problems in project. And these are common. So let me start off by just giving you a little bit more info here about me. Here I am. Um, I'm a, a senior trainer at the Versal Company. And um, uh, you can see by the picture that uh, I'm a gray beard. Been around a long time, saw a lot of issues in, in the discipline of project management, portfolio management, and of course in the tools of project management. This one is uh, it deals with a feature that is not obvious in project, and that is the concept of an elapsed duration. You know, or should know by now, that when you put a duration or assign a duration to a task, that is working duration, meaning working days. So if you had, for example, a two-day activity that started on a Friday, you would know that it would finish on Monday the next week. That would be a two-day normal duration. But if you use an elapsed duration, it's going to finish on Saturday. It's consecutive time from the time of the start until that duration is eaten up on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. So here's a big difference. A day is eight hours, eight working hours. An elapsed day is 24. A week is five working days. So if you use one W in a duration, you get a five-day duration task. And it might be split over a weekend. If you tell project that it is an elapsed week, an EW, one EW, then you will get seven consecutive days. So it's different standards. Duration by default deals with work. But elapsed duration is just consecutive or contiguous calendar time. So I want to demo this and go kind of slowly through it so you can see it in action here. Using an elapsed duration, number seven on our list here. So here we have uh, three, uh, two tasks. They start on a Monday and they're each three days in duration. You can see that that the uh, there's a difference in how it is noted. Three days is working duration. Three E days is, is this consecutive time that we're talking about. And if I were to, uh, to tell project that a task was, say, f six days, that means show me that week Okay, plus go into the next uh, into the next week. We'll see that uh, we've now gone. Even though there's six days, notice that it's almost ten days or nine days here, in terms of of the bar itself. But only six of those days are working days. But if I chose six e days, six E, D, I get a slightly different bar. This one is exactly six days in duration. Now, the first thought here is, oh, that's great. That looks at a calendar kind of the way I look at a calendar. Six days means six days from today, not six working days from today. But don't fool yourself. This can have a huge ramification. I'm going to assign one resource to both of these. And yes, it will be over allocated, but I want to show you the ramifications. So assign a resource to a six-day task with an eight-hour calendar, 48 hours of work. Assign a resource to a task that is elapsed durations, and you're talking about giving that resource a 24-hour day for the run of that duration. So 144 hours of straight work, you know, this person would probably drop at the end of it. So resources that are, you would assign to an elapsed duration event would be things like machinery that can be running 24-7, not people. 
durations themselves are what are used for the human aspect of the project. Things like servers backing up or uh, being upgraded or those, those types of tasks where we are working 24-7, that's what was intended here with the, the elapsed duration units. Be careful in using people with it, however. You get these kinds of, um, well, very hard on, on people. Just cannot work that type of a duration, that much work consecutive and, and contiguously. Elapsed durations. I encourage you to get into the help, look at them in terms of their definition, maybe even experiment with it so you can see these two very, very different approaches to duration in Microsoft Project.